There was a young musician from Pekin named Chuck Perrin. Chuck was going to school at Notre Dame, and he was playing in a band while at the school called the Shags. He enjoyed the group so much that when he moved back home, he decided to form one himself and call them the Shags, but he would spell the name a little different. He used one G instead of two, like the one at school. According to Chuck Perrin, they became very popular in the Peoria Pekin area that year, culminating with a top three finish in the Battle of the Bands at the Illinois State Fair the summer of 65. Talk to Drummer Dave Porter was also very instrumental in the formation of the Shags. Dave's experience tells the story of how most young musicians felt as they followed their dream of what it would be like to be a recording artist. Well, this was at the end of 1965, uh, beginning of 1966. Um, Chuck Perrin had left the group and gone to college at Notre Dame to pursue some more music uh, endeavors. And uh, Jim Conzells left the group and we brought in Carl Mern. Uh, Carl plays guitar and sang vocals and Paul played lead guitar and also sang. Everybody in the group sang. Along with the addition of Carl Mern, a 15-year-old kid named Scott Somerville joined the group as one of the singers. Around 1966, our manager, Pat Bunzel, had contacted Jerry and Marianne Milam in Pekin at Golden Voice Studio, unbeknownst to us. She came in and told us that uh, she'd got us a recording time with Golden Voice. Well, we kind of looked at each other and thought, already we're ready for the, the the big time well we've never recorded anything so we were kind of novices we were ducks out of the water we had no clue of what we're going to be doing went up to see jerry in the control room and all this buttons everywhere and switches and tape machines and we didn't know what half the stuff was and he talked to us and got us a little more comfortable of what we're going to be doing and uh, that started the, uh, the whole ball game rolling. The Shags weren't quite ready to make a record on that first visit, but with Jerry's advice, they got enough information to be prepared to complete a 45 record on their second session. We recorded the first record and the, uh, the lead A song was, What Am I To Do? It Ain't Easy was the B-side. It ain't easy to say goodbye. It ain't easy to see you try. We went up to the control room and Jerry had all this set up for us and we, he played them back. And we thought, darn, geez, we sounded like that. That was awesome. We really uh, enjoyed doing that, so um, as time went on, we recorded another record. We got on the charts. Talk to With Pat Bonzel still as their manager, the Shags went on to play a five-state area fronting for Paul Revere and the Raiders and filling in as Tommy Rose Band. They played with the Buckinghams, the Crying Shames, the Hollies, the Who, and fronted in Chicago when the Dave Clark Five were at the McCormick Place. The Shags recorded a second record, and just after the session, Dave Porter was on duty with the National Guard as part of the National Guard 144th Army Band, and while he was gone, Dick Wessel filled in for the stage performances and the front cover of the recording. 
now that I look back on it, I'm, I'm thinking, here we are in, in Jerry's studio in South Pekin, and all these other guys had recorded in Columbia Studios and Chess Studios in Chicago, and we're getting the same results, you know, out of this one little studio in Golden Voice. Scott Somerville, another member of the Shags, shared that same feeling after hearing their first recording. The experience was just exhilarating for us. I was 15 at the time and I couldn't believe it. That room, I could live in it for the rest of my life. I loved the size of that room. The echo was unique. Jerry had the idea of putting that thing in the ground. <laughs> As for Scott Somerville, his life would always be a part of music. 